Hi everyone, uh, Kai Yukibi here and I uh, hope uh, again as we just share a brief devotion that this would be a time of encouragement to you as we're all still here in isolation and uh, I pray these things that we would be talking about today would set your mind on things above where we belong. Well, some of the most sobering questions Christians can ask themselves are questions like, Am I useful to the Lord? Is there any evidence in my life that He is using me for His purposes? Is there anything that could show that He has or He is uh, working through me? Is there evidence that His power is upon my life when I minister, when I serve, in my day-to-day witness, in my evangelism, in my prayer? Am I being used by the Lord? Am I useful to the Lord? Now, these questions are not particularly easy to get answers uh, for. Uh, The Lord doesn't always uh, reveal whether or not we are being used by Him, particularly in certain ways. A lot of that is unseen and we'll only find out later. But Perhaps the passage that we're going to look at uh, this morning, just briefly consider, might shed a little bit of light on this. And it might cause you to consider things that maybe you hadn't thought before. And uh, I hope it will be helpful. So let's look at our text, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 to 21. Let's read it together. In a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, Some are for noble purposes and some for ignoble. If anyone cleanses themselves from the latter, they will be an instrument for noble purposes, made holy, useful to the master and prepared to do any good work. So here we have Paul giving a metaphor, an example here, and he's painting it for us. And in verse 20, we see that this large house Now, you'll notice the basic metaphor here is of a large house with many utensils in it. So the few things that we see in it immediately is a large house with a variety of utensils. Now, these utensils are described as some made of gold and silver and others made of wood and clay. Now, what are these articles? What are these vessels? The original wording there, the original language, the word can refer to jars, dishes, bowls, serving utensils, household items, household instruments, anything of that kind of sort. And now he lumps these these utensils or these vessels into two categories. The first category are those made of gold and silver. Now, these are the expensive ones. These are the ones of high quality, the high quality dishes and utensils. These are the ones that are durable, hence they're made of gold and silver. These are the ones that are kept and are used and reused. But you'll see the second type that he mentions are those made of wood and clay. Now, these are the cheaper vessels. These are the weaker ones. These are the ones less durable, of lesser quality. They're fragile. They're breakable. uh, They're often unattractive. They were plain. They were kept out of sight. They were even, uh, depending on their particular use, often dirty and smelly. And more often than not, they were disposable. These two types of articles and vessels, these two categories, each also had different purposes. And he goes on to mention that. You'll see there The first, the gold and silver vessels are used for noble purposes, he says. Now, these are the utensils and the items that would be used for the master of the house when he is home and when he has been served dinner. These are also reserved for special banquets and special occasions for feasts or when guests of honor would come. Uh, these These were important things that were used for special occasions, but The second category had a different purpose. These vessels of wood and clay, it says, are used for ignoble purposes, Paul writes there. Now, these would be utensils that were used for food scraps, for waste and rubbish, 
were even used for feces and human waste. Uh, they were used for cloths that had been defiled. And so these, these kind of utensils, they wouldn't be on display for the guests to see. They were kept out of sight. And often such vessels and items, utensils, jars, containers, they were often thrown out with the rubbish. They were disposable. They had no real value. And so if we could, I guess, give a simple modern illustration of it, you would have your fine china, your best cutlery, your best plates, your best glasses that would be uh, used for when you had guests over. But then you have your paper plates uh, that you wouldn't necessarily have hanging up in the kitchen on display. So the, the metaphor, the imagery, even though we're far removed, you know, centuries later from when this was written, a different culture, we can still somewhat relate to this metaphor. So that's a metaphor painted by Paul. Now we get the explanation of the metaphor. And I'm so glad for explanations in the Bible. Uh, they're very helpful for me. I mean, Jesus' parables, when we get the explanations, so helpful. And here, the explanation is incredibly helpful. And Paul makes it in verse 21. Have a look with me. If anyone cleanses themselves from the latter, they will be an instrument for noble purposes, made holy useful to the master and prepared to do any good work. Now, the basic point of that is quite clear. If anyone cleanses, cleanses themselves from what is ignoble, they will be used for noble purposes. Quite, quite, quite simple. But let's really just pull this verse apart because it's incredibly rich and I think it will help bring clarity to those, uh, those earlier questions that we mentioned at the, at the start. You'll see there in verse 21, this, especially that second half of that verse, a great promise. Look, look at the great promise again. These people will be an instrument for noble purposes. They'll be made holy, useful to the master and prepared to do any good work. Now, what Christian doesn't want that? I'm not, a, I'm not a prophet, but I think it's quite safe for me to assume that all of us Christians want that, to want to be useful to the Lord. This is what we want. But you notice this wonderful promise of usefulness to the Lord. It comes with a requirement. It comes with a condition. What's the condition? It says, if anyone cleanses themselves from the latter. Now hold on a second. I I thought the Bible teaches that we are only cleansed by the work of Jesus on the cross. I thought that we become cleansed by his death on the cross. If that's what you think, you're absolutely right. Exactly. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What he does dying on our behalf on the cross, paying for our sins. He makes us pure and acceptable and righteous in God's sight. We are now declared righteous. When God sees us, he sees us through Christ's lenses. We're covered by Christ. Completely pure and holy and righteous positionally before God. But when you read the New Testament, you see this other thing that comes up. Now for the Christian who has been washed in the blood of the Lamb, we are called to cleanse ourselves from sin. We, we are called to regularly cleanse ourselves from sinful behavior, from sinful patterns, from sinful actions, from sinful associations. James, in his letter, he says in, in uh, chapter 4, verse 8, he says, cleanse your hands Purify your heart, sinners. Now that word that Paul is using here, if anyone cleanses themselves, it means to purge. Now this isn't referring to tidying up your life. This is to clean thoroughly. When, when we talk about purging, a good example, there are many, a good example would be a spring clean of the house. This isn't time for tidying. This is time for clearing out all the rubbish and clutter and it goes on the council pickup. Uh, another example might be if you have wasps hanging around on, the, on your deck veranda area, if you want to clear out the wasps, well, killing just one of them isn't going to do it. What do you need to do? If you want to clear them out, you need to go straight for the nest. 
And this is exactly what Jesus taught us with regards to our relationship with sin as Christians. He talks about this purging and clearing out. He says, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. This is purging, clearing out language. And, and Paul here says, if anyone cleanses themselves from the latter, what's he referring to? Well, what we have just said, the latter is referring to in anything that is ignoble, anything that is shameful. This is the spiritual interpretation of the metaphor. Clearing out whatever is shameful, disgraceful, dishonor, in a word, whatever is sinful. Paul is saying to us, do you want this great promise laid out? Do you want to be used for noble service to the Lord? Do you want to be useful to the Lord? Do you want to be set apart unto God for His service? Do you want to be prepared to do any good work as he writes? Well, Paul says there's a requirement. What's the requirement? Holy living. This is what he lays out here. Loving what is good, hating what is evil. This is pursuing righteousness. This is denying self, hungering and thirsting for what is right. This is obedience to our Lord. This is not being worldly. This is avoiding and abstaining all those things that will defile our mind. Things that are laid as entertainment today, but that defile and, and uh, cause us to be impure. These sinful ways. This is important. Paul says this is a requirement to be useful unto the Lord for service. That great, great preacher, Robert Murray McShane, he died at such a, a young age of 29. When he was talking to an even younger student, he, he said this. Let me quote him. And he gives this kind of illustration. And he says, quote, How the diligent cavalry officer keeps his saber clean and sharp. Every stain he rubs off with the greatest care. Remember, you are God's sword, his instrument, a chosen vessel unto him to bear his name. In great measure, according to the purity and perfection of the instrument, will be the success. It is not great talents God blesses so much as likeness to Jesus. A holy minister is an awful weapon in the hand of God. And you can add to that, his point is, a holy Christian is an awful weapon in the hand of God. He, is a, he or she is a mighty weapon in God's hand, extremely useful for the Lord's work. Do you want to be used by God? Do you want to be useful to the Master in serving Him? Do you want this? Well, what are those things that are choking your life? What are those things that are causing your love for Him to be dull? What are the things that consume your time and snuff out the fire of your love for Him? What are the things that are competing for the affections of your heart? What is competing with God in your life for your heart? What, what are those things? And Paul is saying, whatever they are, purge them, get rid of them, repent and turn from them. Now understand, let, let me be clear here. I'm not talking about I'm not talking about perfection here. I'm not talking about this holiness where that we don't sin. No, we're all gonna sin. But I'm talking about taking sin seriously. I'm talking about drawing near to God. I'm I'm talking about a relationship with the Lord that goes beyond just having a five-minute quiet time with Him at the beginning or end of your day. I'm talking about what Paul says, being so devoted that you present your body as a living sacrifice to Him. I'm talking about a devotion where you surrender your life and it's coming to God saying, I will no longer serve two masters. I will no longer have one foot in the kingdom and one foot in the world. I won't do that anymore. Isn't this promise that we're given for such a resolve, isn't it wonderful? Isn't, isn't the result incredible? Anyone, Paul says, anyone who cleanses themselves from these sinful ways and, and sinful uh, indifference, anyone who does that, they will be an instrument for noble use of the Lord. 
They will be set apart as holy unto God. They will be useful to the master. They will be prepared to do any good work. Isn't that, isn't that incredible? Who wouldn't want that? And notice there too, let, please let me make sure that I clarify. Paul says, prepared to do any good work. What's this noble service that Paul's promising that we will get if we do this? What, what's he referring to? He's not saying you will get what people call the most esteemed and high and, and most privileged and, and upfront and glorious ministry roles and opportunity for service. No, no, he says you'll be prepared for any good work. What, what is this? If you cleanse yourself, you will be useful to the Lord in whatever way he sees fit. You will be entrusted with whatever the Lord deems important. I think this is a wonderful thing. Who, who, who wouldn't want this? What more could we want for him? Is there anything more desirable for the Christian than this, than to be entrusted with the Lord's work? Don't you want to be, if the Lord is drawing his bow, don't you want to be one of the first arrows that he pulls and reaches into grab from his quiver? Don't you want that? It's a wonderful promise. And yet he holds the condition up before all of us. And his condition is, I will only use clean vessels. Now, the Lord can and has used vile and wicked and disobedient vessels. Nebuchadnezzar is a great example of that. But his principle that he lays that he lays out for us is clear here. He wants to use, he's committed to using those who who, who pursue holiness and obedience to him. Let me wrap up. There's a very precious word in all of this. You cannot miss it. Paul says, if, if, if anyone cleanses himself. Do you see that? Christian, and only for the Christian who's been washed in the blood of Christ. This is a call to all of us and to any of us. A call that goes out to every Christian. An opportunity for every Christian. An opportunity for every Christian to be useful to the Lord. An opportunity for every Christian to be set apart for noble use. An opportunity for every Christian to be useful to the Lord. Isn't this, isn't this wonderful? So hear Paul in this passage. Hear what he's saying to each of us. If anyone cleanses themselves, if anyone, so citizens of heaven, today God in his grace, he holds out this opportunity for each of us to make something of our lives, to make our lives count for something. Which one of us here, which of us will be the servants useful to the Lord, useful to the Master. Amen. Amen.